name is Alan Chu, and I'm an engineer at National Instruments. I've been working at National Instruments since 2005, and since then I've been using LabVIEW, LabVIEW Real-Time, and many other NI products uh, on a daily basis. In my time as an applications engineer, I have worked on a wide variety of customer applications, and now I'm a course development engineer. So now what I do is I use my knowledge and my experience to create courses for engineers and scientists like you to become proficient at using our tools uh, to, so you can create successful applications out there in the world. Today what we'll be doing is we'll be going through the LabVIEW Real-Time 1 self-paced online training. In this training, you will learn how to prototype a deterministic or a PXI system that's running a real-time operating system, then this is the right course for you. In the classroom version of this course, students will use the following hardware. So they have a Compact Rio 9074, they have a 9211, which is a thermocouple module, and a 9474, which is a digital output module. These interface with a temperature chamber, which includes a lamp, a thermocouple, and a fan. In the self-paced online training, what I'll do is I will go ahead and demo the exercises for you using this hardware. You can feel free to follow along in the... Welcome to the LabVIEW Real-Time 1 self-paced online training course. In this course, you will learn how to to create deterministic measurement and control systems. At the end of the course, you'll be able to design, develop, and prototype a real-time application that handles communication between the RT target and a host computer using NI recommended methods and LabVIEW real-time. By the end of this module, you will be able to define basic real-time terms. Let's take a look at the course learning map. So in lesson one, we'll start off by just having an introduction overview of real-time systems, and then we'll let go to lesson two, and we'll talk about how do you configure your RT hardware. Next, we'll go to lesson three, and we'll talk about how do you access your I.O. on your RT target in your BIs. And in lesson four, we'll talk about uh, real-time architecture, so we'll talk about how to do priorities and things like that. Lesson five, we'll talk about inter-process communication, so we're going to learn how to communicate between different loops on your RT target. Lesson six, we'll talk about communicating between the RT target and your host computer. Lesson seven, we'll talk about verifying your application. And in lesson eight, we'll talk about an introduction to deployment, and we'll learn how to create a startup RT application. Let's take a look at some of the course goals. So this course is going to prepare you to understand real-time system concepts, including jitter, determinism, and other real-time terms. You'll also be able to configure your real-time hardware targets in the Measurement and Automation Explorer, or Max. You'll be able to prioritize and communicate between multiple loops that are running on your real-time target inside your real-time VI. And you'll also be able to communicate between your real-time target and a VI that's running on your host computer. The LabVIEW Real-Time 1 course prepares you to be able to prototype a deterministic real-time application. However, you must learn other skills that are covered in the LabVIEW Real-Time 2 course if you want to be able to create a reliable, deployed, professional real-time application. Now let's dive into Lesson 1, Introduction to Real-Time Systems. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about what is a real-time system and talk about some of the terminology associated with it. And then we're going to end off by talking about the real-time system components. So what are the different components in your real-time system? So what is a real-time system? One misconception about real-time is that it means real quick. Uh, more accurately, real-time means in time. In other words, a real-time system ensures that responses occur in time or on time. Let's contrast that with an application that's running on a general purpose operating system like Windows. For that Windows application, you can't ensure that a response is going to occur within a given time period, and calculations might finish much later or possibly earlier than you expect them to. A real-time system is going to have a real-time response, which is the ability to reliably and without fail respond to an event or perform an operation within a guaranteed time period. So a real-time system may or may not be fast, 
but a real-time system will definitely provide much more precise and predictable timing characteristics. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of examples of real-time applications. So one, let's take a look at event response. An application that requires a reliable event response time would benefit from using a real-time system. For example, a monitoring system on a oil rig is going to need to respond to alarm conditions reliably on time to prevent further damage and danger. Another example might be an airbag. If you're developing a system with an airbag, that airbag needs to deploy on time. It can't be too early and it can't deploy too late, otherwise you might have injury. Another example of that is also automated visual inspection on an assembly line. So if you had that inspection, it needs to inspect each part reliably on time, otherwise it might cause a delay or possibly a, a missed part or maybe you miss a defect or something like that. Another use case for real-time applications is closed-loop control. A closed-loop control application would benefit from using a real-time system because it must produce an output based on the input values within a guaranteed time frame. So a common example would be an application requiring a control algorithm, such as PID control. In ECU modeling, or engine control unit modeling, a real-time system uses a closed-loop control to simulate the ECU. The real-time system is attached to the actual hardware of the car and produces outputs based on the inputs, but it needs to do this within the guaranteed time frame for this uh, modeling and testing to be accurate and to work correctly. A critical test application would also benefit from using a real-time system because the system must work reliably, possibly for an extended amount of time. So imagine you have an application where you're doing some structural monitoring and you have to put your application out in possibly a remote location. Well, you want that to be able to run reliably and possibly for a very extended amount of time. With the real-time system, it's going to be more reliable, uh, therefore it's going to be able to run for an extended amount of time without crashing. Now let's talk about some real-time terms. So first, what is loop cycle time? This is just the execution time of one cycle of a loop. Many systems that require a real-time system such as the control application, are going to be cyclical. You're going to have a control loop that needs to run at a um, certain loop cycle time. So what is jitter? Let's say you have a desired loop cycle time. So you have some loop running, and you know that that loop needs to run at a certain desired time. Well, jitter is just a variation when you're running it from that desired loop time. So if the desired loop time might be 10 seconds, the jitter will, would be on a certain instance of that loop, if it ran for 9 seconds, you would have a jitter of 1 second. Or if it ran for 12 seconds instead of 10 seconds, then you have a jitter of 2 seconds. Next we have determinism. Determinism describes how consistently the system responds to external events or performs operations within a given time limit. So an application that's running on a real-time system is going to have a high amount of determinism because of the real-time response. An application running on a Windows system, on the other hand, is going to have a lower amount of determinism. Deterministic tasks are tasks that must finish on time every time. So in your application, if you have a control loop that needs to finish on time every single time or something bad's going to happen, then your control loop is an example of one of your deterministic tasks. And then priority is what defines when a VI or a loop should execute relative to other VIs and loops. So if you have multiple loops in your application, uh, they might have different priorities, and you can set that in a real-time system. In this slide, we have a graphic that describes jitter. So as you can see at the top, there is a red arrow, and that is representing the desired loop time. And then, and all the other black arrows are showing the actual timing of each loop iteration. So let's look at the first loop iteration. Um, in this case, it went a little longer than the desired loop time, so we have some jitter there. Uh, the second one also ran a little longer. The third one ran a little shorter. The fourth one ran a little longer, and the fifth one ran a little shorter. So the variation uh, of each iteration compared to the actual desired loop time is going to be what your jitter is. And notice another specification that, that you would measure on your real-time system
that work? Now you can define basic real-time terms. Next, we will describe the differences between a general purpose operating system and a real-time operating system. In the previous section, we defined basic real-time terms. By the end of this module, you will be able to describe differences between a general purpose OS and a real-time OS. First, let's talk about general purpose operating systems. So in a general purpose operating system, for example, Windows, processor time is shared between several programs. So for example, you might have your LabVIEW VI running, but at the same time, you might also have uh, Microsoft Word running, PowerPoint, you might have an internet browser open, uh, you might have an email client open all at the same time. So that processor time can be shared between multiple programs and those programs might be fighting for CPU resources. Also, on a general operating system, if your VI is running there, then that VI can be preempted by multiple things. So for example, it could be preempted by any of those programs I was telling you about before that are running at the same time. Uh, there's screen savers, there's disk utilities, there's antivirus software that might start up a scan and use up a lot of your CPU. Also, in the background, the operating system of Windows might need to service interrupts. So for example, things coming from the keyboard, the mouse, the internet, so there's a lot of stuff that's connected to it as well. So because there's a lot of things going on, notice that there's going to be a high amount of jitter in your application. And the jitter might be unbounded. For example, antivirus software might kick up a scan and hog all the resources for a long time. And it might slow down your VI for who knows how long. So as you can see, a general purpose operating system wasn't necessarily made for real-time response. Therefore, it cannot guarantee determinism. A real-time operating system, on the other hand, was built for real-time response. If you're using a real-time operating system, or, or RTOS, it's going to ensure that high-priority tasks execute first. So if you're using an RTOS, you can actually define the priorities of different tasks, and the RTOS will execute them accordingly. Also, with the RTOS, it's going to uh, run with extended reliability. The reason for that is in a real-time operating system, there's a minimal set of software that's installed to ensure that reliability. And generally, a real-time operating system or RTOS does not require user input from peripherals. So a real-time operating system doesn't necessarily need to have a mouse or keyboard connected. The LabVIEW real-time module executes VIs on the following real-time operating systems, which would be running on a real-time target. So one is NIETS, and the other is Wind River VXWorks. Okay, so how do you know which operating system you need? Uh, so in this slide, we'll talk about what a general purpose OS can do and what a real-time OS can do. So let's talk about a general purpose OS first. If you want to acquire real-time data, um, you may not necessarily need a real-time OS. National Instruments has many data acquisition or DAC devices that can acquire data in real-time even though they are controlled by programs running in Windows. The DAC device has an onboard hardware clock that ensures a constant rate of data acquisition, and then the VI on Windows is just going to be grabbing that data from the buffer. In the same way, in a general purpose OS, you can be doing instrument control, where you're possibly using GPIB to communicate with other instruments that are acquiring the data in real time on the actual instrument, but the Windows VI is just using GPIB to grab that data and put it into your Windows VI. Also, let's say you're just doing offline analysis. So if you're doing analysis that's happening offline, then that analysis doesn't necessarily need to happen in real time. As long as it ends up getting done, no matter how long it takes, then that's all you really need. If that's the case, then that task can be handled on a general purpose OS. Also, data presentation. So uh, a general purpose OS definitely shines in this because it's, um, for, for example, Windows, the OS was made for users and uh, for being able to visually present things. For example, doing nice graphs and things like that, that's good on a general purpose OS. Now let's shift our gears and talk about a real-time OS and what that can be used for. So if you have closed loop control, so for example, if you're taking the input and you need to process that input in a guaranteed amount of time and then create an output, then a real-time OS is going to be good for that because that closed loop control can happen with very low jitter. Also, if you need to make time critical decisions, so again, if you need something to be able to happen within a guaranteed time frame, then you want to put that on your real-time OS. Also, the real-time OS is going to have less jitter. Uh, it's going to have a minimum amount of software on there, so it's going to be more reliable. So you're going to have increased reliability on a real-time OS, which also means you're going to have an extended runtime as well, so less crashes. Uh, also, if your application just needs to run on something with headless operation, so you don't need a mouse or keyboard 
or a monitor, you just need something to be to be running out there in the field, then a real-time operating system could be good for that as well. Also, if you want something with a smaller physical footprint of hardware, RT targets can just run that RTOS and you don't need to have a huge computer to lug around with a keyboard and monitor and all of that kind of stuff. So this is beneficial in scenarios when physical space is limited. You can use the LabVIEW real-time module to develop real-time applications. So you can use this to develop deterministic real-time performance in your VIs and target them at an RT target. You can create and debug reliable determinist applications that run on a standalone embedded hardware target. And um, with, if you're using the live real-time module, you're also going to have hundreds of real-time drivers for multiple boards available to you and also analysis functions that are built into the pallets. To use the LabVIEW real-time module, it requires having the LabVIEW full professional development system. In this slide, we have an overview of how the LabVIEW real-time system works. So on your host computer on the left, on a Windows machine, for example, you would be opening up LabVIEW and the LabVIEW real-time module, and you would develop your real-time VIs there. Okay? And then after you're done developing your RTVI, what you can do is you can run it, and what that does is it'll deploy that application and have it run on the actual RT target. So at this point, let's go ahead and do exercise 1-1. One, one. So in exercise 1-1, one, one, if you open up your exercise manual, you'll be able to go through a specifications document for your project. And this is a project that we'll work on uh, la later on in the course. So in this specifications document, we're going to have some requirements. And based on that requirement, um, we're going to determine whether or not we need a real-time system for this project. So real quick, I'm just going to kind of summarize this. I'm going to read part of the specifications. This specifications document is going to describe a temperature control system. And one of the specifications says this. The temperature should be measured, recorded, and used to calculate output to the lamp. Also, an output should be applied within a set response rate, in other words, loop cycle. This system needs a response rate at 10 hertz with a maximum of 1 hertz deviation. So based on this um, requirement and the things that we've talked about in this module, we know that a real-time system is going to be appropriate for this system. And the reason why is because this system requires a real-time response rate. Now you can describe differences between a general purpose OS and a real-time OS. Next, we will describe the components of a real-time system. In the previous section, we described differences between a general purpose OS and a real-time OS. By the end of this module, you will be able to describe the components of a real-time system. A real-time system consists of software and hardware components. The software components include LabVIEW, the RT engine, and the LabVIEW projects and VIs you create. The hardware components of a real-time system include a host computer and an RT target. So first, let's talk about the host computer. The host computer is a computer with LabVIEW and LabVIEW real-time module installed on, on it, and you can develop VIs for the real-time system there. After developing the real-time system VIs, you can download and run the VIs on an RT target. The host computer can run VIs that communicate with VIs running on the RT target to provide a user interface for your real-time system. So the RT target is the hardware that runs the RT engine and the VIs that you created in LabVIEW on your host computer. Okay, so the, the VI that you built on your host computer is actually going to be running on these RT targets. And in this slide, we see a, a list of um, example RT targets. So one, uh, there's a PXI embedded controller, and that's going to have uh, very high speeds, great performance. You're going to be able to access lots of channels. And there's a lot of variety there as well, a lot of different PXI boards. Another one is Compact Rio. This is going to be in a very rugged enclosure. a real-time OS on it, of course, and it, in addition to that, it has an FPGA that you can utilize as well. 
the next one we see is an embedded vision system or a NI smart camera. And these are real-time targets that, that also allow you to uh, use cameras. We also have the NI industrial controllers, and those are rugged, fanless, and have high performance. We also have the NI single board Rio, and this is uh, very similar to the compact Rio, it's just the board version of it. So as you can see, there's no enclosure around it, it's just the uh, board itself. And last, we also have a desktop PC, so you can make a desktop PC run at RTOS. That way you can take advantage of PCI cards that you have and have them running on an RTOS. So here we see a PXI embedded controller. So it's in a rugged chassis. Um, it's got integrated timing and triggering lines that are built into the back plane of it. You have serial, USB, Ethernet, and GPIB ports that you can use um, to, to connect to other things. You have lots of different plug-in I.O. modules. So you can have DAC boards, you can have DMMs, digitizers, high-speed digital I.O. boards, and, and much, much more. Again, like I said, it's very high performance, and uh, you get that advanced timing and synchronization as well. You can synchronize multiple modules, and you can do all of this and take advantage of the RTOS at the same time. Here we see a compact Rio, and notice that we have the, uh, the, the controller uh, that's on the left. In the previous section, we described